Dear Muslims, the very first battle that took place in the seerah, the battle of Badr, because of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an entire surah in the Quran, surah to Al-Anfal. And when Ibn Abbas was asked about this surah, he said, yes, that is surah to Al-Badr. He calls Surah Al-Anfal Surah Al-Badr to indicate the entire surah is about the battle of Badr. And the battle of Badr, as we know, was the most decisive battle in early Islam. In fact, Allah calls it the day of clarification, the day of criterion, the day that truth was separated from falsehood. Today, inshallah, in my khutbah, I will extract from Surah Al-Anfal seven lessons that we can learn for victory. How do Muslims attain victory? Surah Al-Anfal was revealed right when the Muslims saw the victory firsthand. They were not expecting that victory. In fact, the battle was not even planned. The battle of Badr wasn't a planned battle, but it just so happened the circumstance was created and the Muslims found themselves ill-equipped, unprepared, facing an enemy far more powerful than them, prepared enemy. The Muslims didn't come to battle. The Muslims came to take the, the ghanima of Abu Sufyan, but that was not meant to be planned. So let us read that surah. Seven lessons for victory from Surah Al-Anfal. The first lesson right at the beginning of the surah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions right at the beginning, the very second verse, Allah describes the believers. The true believers are those who, when Allah's name is mentioned, when they hear the remembrance of Allah, their hearts tremble in fear. And when the Quran is recited to them, their iman goes up and they put their trust in Allah. Now, this surah came down to talk about the victory of the battle of Badr. And Allah begins the surah describing who the real believers are, describing the strength of Iman, describing their fear of Allah, describing their love of Allah, describing them listening to the Quran and increasing their Iman, describing their tawakkul in Allah. Is this a coincidence? Of course not. Victory is given to those who meet this description. You want Allah's victory? Read the surah from the beginning. The very second ayah tells you who victory will be given to. You want Allah's nasr to come? First and foremost, have your tawakkul in Allah, your trembling of Allah, your iman in Allah, your listening to the tilawah of the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do all of these characteristics and then Allah's nasr will come. This is the first lesson. Meet the characteristics of the mu'minun as Allah describes in Surah Al-Anfal. The second wisdom we learn, multiple ayat mention that look, you can plan as much as you want, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will plan separate from you. And the plan of Allah is better than your plan. Sometimes what Allah plans, you don't like it. You weren't expecting it, but you must trust that Allah's plan is better than your plan. This is a constant theme of Surah Al-Anfal. You have to put your trust in Allah that sometimes your plan doesn't work out, but you still did good because your niyyah was right and your methodology was right and Allah's plan will be better than your plan. This is the second thing we learn from Surah Al-Anfal and from the Battle of Badr. The third thing that we learn, right in the middle of the surah, verses 45 onwards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, if you meet a contingent, if you meet the other side, if you meet the other side, by the way, there is a type of indirect reference here it, that you should not be eager to begin. It should not primarily be your job. And this is, of course, the overall methodology of the Quran and of our seerah and of the sharia is that you give the enemy the opportunity to have a peace treaty, agree to the conditions. But if you are forced to, then of course, if you have to fight for your freedoms, then you fight for your freedoms as the Prophet ﷺ did against the Quraysh. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you meet to them, don't turn your back and run away in fear. Whoever does so will meet Allah's punishment. That's not the way of the believer. So Allah says, when you meet the contingent, then be firm. We learn over here, don't give up, don't falter, don't waver. Whatever is your plan, whatever is your vision, whatever is your agenda, continue and persevere. Even if you personally fail, the army is going to succeed. You might not get to the end, but if you collectively push together, you will get to the end. Do not take your personal failure as the failure of the 
entire army. You might not see the victory, but you must continue to persist and persevere. You do your job and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next point, even as you're engaged in your methodology, even as you're doing what you need to do, don't forget, help comes from Allah. So make sure your tongue is constantly moving with the dhikr of Allah. Imagine, this is in the battle of Badr. Imagine, they're literally fighting the army of the Quraysh and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, even in the thick of the battle, don't forget to remember Allah frequently if you want to be successful. You do your effort and then you put your trust in Allah. You exert your utmost, you don't give up. And as you do, the utmost you can do, turn to Allah for help. You want falah, you want success, the two combination of your physical effort along with your turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also in the same verse 45-46, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Obey Allah and His Messenger if you want to be successful. Once again, notice in the thick of the battle and Allah is saying, you want Allah's help? Make sure your lifestyle is in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah. Make sure you're obeying Allah and the Messenger. Make sure that you're not following your desires. Make sure that the haram is haram and the halal is halal. So you want success right in the thick of the battle. Allah reminds them, obey Allah and His Messenger if you want to be successful. Also in Surah Al-Anfal, one of the powerful verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, hearken to the call of Allah and His Messenger when they're calling you to that which will give you your life. Obey the command of Allah and His Messenger. When they call you, what do they call you to? Anything. Whatever they call you to do, listen to that call. Obey that call. Respond to that call. In responding to that call is your own life. Respond to the call of Allah and the call of His Messenger when they call you to that which will give you your own life back. Your life is meaningless without obedience to Allah. Your life is spiritually dead without servitude to Allah. You want to feel spiritually alive? You want to feel the power of Iman? Then turn to Allah and His Messenger and you will find that haya. Also, verse number 46, and do not differ amongst yourselves. Do not fight amongst yourselves. If you do so, you're gonna lose hope. You're going to get discouraged. Your optimism will go away. This is a powerful, powerful message. And one of the biggest problems we have today is we are constantly fighting amongst ourselves. We are constantly divided. We have no unity. We take each other as enemies. And what is the saddest thing is that this animosity is the most amongst the religious folks. We differ amongst the most petty issues, amongst how you pray or what you believe about this aspect or some tiny aspect of theology or fiqh or methodology. And instead of understanding we're all on the same team, we start hating one another. This guy's a kafir, this guy's a reformist, this guy's this and that. La hawla wa la illa billah. Don't you understand this disunity? Not only are you causing chaos amongst ourselves, you are benefiting the enemies of Islam. Oh Muslims, fear Allah and listen to the Quran. Don't differ amongst yourselves. And then the final point, but again, so much can be said, but time is limited. The final advice we give, be patient and Allah is with those who are patient. Now, this is an interesting verse because patience implies things happen that you didn't want to happen. Patience implies you weren't given victory. Patience implies you have to keep on pushing, 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 which means victory will not come immediately, which means you have to keep on persevering and do not give up. Allah explicitly says, you're not gonna be given victory at the first beginning of the battle. You're gonna have to keep on, keep on, keep on. And eventually those that are patient, they will taste victory. These are but some of the many, many blessings that we learn from the seerah and from the Quran.